I've got to be careful with the amount of sugar that's in it. Welcome back to Teach a Man to Fish channel. Today's video is going to be chicken wings on the Lodge Sportsman's Grill. Let's go ahead and get started. So I just got home from work and don't have a whole lot of time to get things ready. This is a simple prep. So clearly you could break this tray of wings down into its constituents, the drumstick and the flat, but I like to cook them whole and it's easier to manage actually on the grill. So this video is coming at the request of one of the channel subscribers. He says he spends a lot of time in hotels, doesn't like to eat fast food, and wants to take his Lodge Sportsman's Grill with him to the hotel and just cook out in the parking lot. Need something simple and quick. I've got just the answer for it. When you're picking your barbecue spice that you're going to sprinkle on these wings, make sure you watch out for the sweetness and sugar. With this Lodge Sportsman's Grill, you're just over the coals and you don't want that sugar to caramelize too quickly and end up burning. Pick your favorite barbecue rub, rib rub, uh, butt rub, whichever one you wanna do. I had this in my pantry, so I'm gonna go, go ahead and use it. It's a sweet and smoky barbecue. A little less on the sweet side and a little bit more salty. That's the way I like it. Now that we've got that wrapped up, let's head on out to the grill. So as you know, the Live Sportsman's Grill is really efficient in running, so you don't want to put too many coals because this is a delicate cook. Now at the very end, I like to use a hot wing sauce. I make my own out of Frank's butter, and I throw some habanero flakes in. While those coals are getting ready, we'll go ahead and go inside and get a hot sauce whipped up. Of course, you can pick your favorite hot wing sauce and use it on it, or naked. They're just as good coming off the grill, fresh the way they are. So for this sauce, I take a stick of butter, throw it in the microwave, melt it down. Next, you take that sauce, make it about one-thirds butter, two-thirds sauce. And for my family, we like to kick it up a notch and throw in some powdered habanero. And this is grown fresh from our garden and dried in the dehydrator. Up above, you'll see a video that talks about that process too. For you, John, in your hotel parking lot cook, you just want to get a pre-canned, pre-set up bottle, whatever you find is your favorite. And I stress once again, you don't even have to put any sauce on these. They're great just dipping naked with how they come off the grill with that barbecue mix that we already put on it. This sauce will also thicken up with time as it sits. Now for just a little bit of grill prep work. Can't stress enough, be careful with how many coals you put in. You can always put more in. As a matter of fact, we're gonna be starting this grill out with the draft damper door closed. Starting with that damper door closed allows you to have better control over the heat. Therefore, you have no flare-ups. You can always open the door and add oxygen later, which will help it burn hotter if you need it. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is a must-have for this cook. It traps the heat in, gives it a little bit of a better roast, more efficiency, and I'm not even sure how well it would cook without that on top. You'd have to do more flipping or something. This just makes it a stable cook. I think part of it is where you're reducing that oxygen level further, preventing flare-ups, but at the same time, you're capturing all that smoke and heat. If you like the gear and grill equipment we use in this video, I'll put an Amazon link down below where you can make an easy and quick purchase. Well, I didn't record the first flip, just know they've been flipped once already. And I usually do this in intervals of about 10 to 15 minutes. Again, you've got to monitor this closely 
to prevent those flare-ups from occurring. And your goal is to achieve about 190 degrees. That's when the meat pulls out perfectly off the bone and you get that good flavor. Finley's never far away, waiting for something good to drop. For dipping sauces, typically that would either be ranch or blue cheese. You make the call. For this cook, I'm gonna go ahead and kill. kill. <laughs> it's, done. it's September and hunting season is rapidly approaching. What can I say? I know where my brain is. And for this cook, I'm gonna go ahead and cook habanero and serrano peppers grilled right alongside it. It'll add just a little bit of extra flavor that I like to have as a side dish. Just roll those around, get them good and coated. You want to get all the nooks and crannies and crevices full of that delicious sauce. As you know, my family likes it spicy, so we're back out in the garden. Get a couple of serranos and some jalapenos. We'll go ahead and grill those up on the grill and set them up as a side garnish. Also going to cut up a little bit of celery for dipping in those sauces as well. Adding in that celery is a great way to cut the heat some if it starts to get away from you with all that spice and peppers. Just take a look at how effective that is, hitting that 190 degrees. That meat just pulls right off the bone, tender as can be. And even in through here, you can see that pink, that smoke flavor. So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload. And over here is a playlist of other live sportsman's grill cooking. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.